Hello, family. We're so glad you dropped by our kitchen today. It's a beautiful day here in the neighborhood, to coin a phrase. We're glad that when the family drops by, it's always a great day, and we're so thankful that you chose to do that today. We're getting ready for the Easter holiday, Resurrection Sunday, one of my most favorite times of all the years. It's a powerful time when you realize exactly what happened when Jesus came out of that tomb, I tell you, it changed humanity forever. It gave us all a chance. We have a Savior, and his name is Jesus. So today we're doing the part one. This is not the Easter dinner. This is Easter breads and desserts candy. And we're gonna, we did it too so that we could have the dinner one week and we could have the desserts one week. So you can bake this ahead of time, pop it in the freezer, and when you, it comes time for, for you to do the Easter dinner, you'll have your desserts and candy and breads already done. The best you could do for your dinner, for your guests, is to have things done earlier, ahead of time, so that you don't have so much to rush about on the day of the dinner. Because let's face it, you can only do so much, and, and it's hard to cover all the bases and make sure you have everything. Let me show you. We're going to make an Easter holla. You know what Easter holla is? It's a bread. And I've got to show you this dough because... It's been raising. I'm going to show you how to make this. This is one of the easiest doughs. Look at that. Is that a beauty or what? And you make it in the mixer, and you let it rise one time for an hour, and this is what you have. And then I'm going to show you what you do with this. This makes into a braided bread. It is so good, so delicious. I'm telling you, you're going to want to keep some of those in the freezer for all year long. It's a great, great bread. They, they um, sometimes call, they, you could use that and make it into a pasca too, I, I believe, because the, the dough is so easy to work with. We're going to show you how, plus how to make some Easter eggs and how to make for your wonderful dessert a coconut tort cake. I love it with coconut and, and that frosting. Oh, it's going to be good. So stay with us. We're here to take the hint. And when we come back, we're going to start with our challah bread and our Easter eggs. We'll be back in just a minute. Here's today's at-home hint. When using a double boiler setup for melting chocolate, be sure to keep the water hot but not boiling and never let water touch the bottom of the bowl. The chocolate will get too hot and seize up. For updates, pictures, stories, and more, like us on Facebook. To watch hundreds of classic episodes, subscribe to us on YouTube. And to get hundreds of free recipes, visit ctvn.org slash at home. Hard to believe Easter is here, huh? I can't believe it. Thank God spring is just around the bend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's here already. Thank God. We're so happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Patty's going to do some Easter eggs, and she's going to make a filling for them. She's actually going to make one dough. It's called dough or a batter? I guess more of a dough, yeah. And then you divide it into four, and you can make peanut butter, coconut, Plain or peanut butter, chocolate. Oh, peanut, peanut butter. butter. All right, sorry. <laughs> okay, so she's going to do that, and I'm going to start. This has to to spin a while and, and mix. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this, and then she's going to show you that. Okay, I have seven cups of flour. This is for our challah bread. Seven cups of flour in this. Put your dough hook on. That's this guy right here. Hardly ever use him, but boy, does he come in handy. All right, and here's what you're going to add: six tablespoons of brown sugar. One package of rapid rise. Make sure it says rapid rise yeast. Just one package. We can figure out where it was opened at. Oh, here we go. Nope, I don't think it's open. <laughs> okay. We're going to get it open now. There you go. Yeah. Just one package of that, all right? Let me get rid of those. Two eggs. A little bit of salt. Okay, this is uh, one tablespoon of salt. This is cinnamon, two teaspoons of cinnamon. We have a half a cup of canola oil. There we are. Three-fourths cup of raisins. Makes it so good. All right, and a tablespoon of salt, because this is seven cups, so that should be good and um, it should be salty enough that you can taste it. And then this is two cups of kind of warm water because this is going to activate the yeast. I'm telling you, this is absolutely the way you make it. You see this? You put that in, put this down, 
put the lock on, start very slowly, or you'll be wearing it mm. before it gets to be a batter. <laughs> okay, now the only other two things you need is some sesame seeds and an egg. Okay, Patty, okay. it's all yours. All right, you use a half a cup of butter and eight ounces of cream cheese, a teaspoon of vanilla, and then you put in two and a half pounds of powdered sugar. So that would be like a two pound bag in another cup. Right. Okay. And then you just start squishing it and mixing it together. Squishing it and Squishing mixing it, it and together. that's what you're doing is squishing it okay. with your hands. Because to do it with a mixer, it's too dry. Sure. And your hands add that heat and moisture to keep yeah. it. Makes but sense. But this, this is a fun and messy job. Kids would probably really like doing this. Well, anything, anytime they get their hands in it, they like oh, to do yeah. it. Oh, yeah. And this is, it's a gushy, messy. Are you going to use this? You're done I'm going to use that for the chocolate and the one for the chocolate and one, one for the peanut yeah. butter. Okay. So you're going to need these, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Already got powdered sugar shooting everywhere. Like she said, these are squishy. It's a squishy. Yeah. And you get both hands in there, otherwise you'll never get it mixed. Well, you couldn't do that with a mixer because yeah. I don't think that would work well, would it? Mm-mm. No, and just when you think it's not going to work, it all, it comes, all comes together. It all comes together, yeah. That's usually the way those things happen. Mm -hmm. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm just going to mix this egg because we're going to use this to paint our breads with when we come back, okay? Now, what does the egg do? Does it give it color? It does. It gives that shine to it on the outside of the bread. And you want to stop this every once in a while. And what you want to do is just... Get in there and scrape everything down. That's probably the easiest bread I've ever I'm seen. I'm telling you. You know, I've got to tell you, I'm a little intimidated with yeast doughs. Yeah, me too. And I've ruined so many times. So I, I've just kind of shied away from them. But I thought, I really like this bread, and I try to get it all the time. And sometimes you can get it, sometimes you can't. And I thought, i got to, you know, I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to make it. Right. I was shocked at how well this came out. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's a nice consistency. It's delicious, because we tried it already. Look okay. at this is starting. Oh, yeah, it's coming together. Yeah, it just takes a lot of hand work here. Sure. But, but it's you coming can together see, nice. you just keep working it. You keep working it, and you'll get it all. And it does, it makes a real nice, I guess it's a confection. Oh, OK. You say so. Yeah. OK, it sounds can, good. I want you to see the consistency of this bread, though. See this? It's all sticking to the, let me show you. It's all sticking. Now, depending on the day that you make it, this is something you have to decide. It's a little damp out today, so that's seven cups of flour. You might need just to add another scoop because you see how sticky that is? It's too wet. So I'm just going to put a little bit. You don't want to put too much in because you don't want to dry, but you want it enough so that you can work it with your hands, okay? Well, that's, that's flying everywhere. <laughs> it, it's flying everywhere. It's a messy job, uh -huh. but it's good. It works, huh? Mm-hmm. That's good. Now, for, for what I'm doing here with the bread, you want to preheat your... You're, you're going to let this raise for an hour. But when it comes time to bake it, you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. That's important, okay? You're going to let it raise one time. And when it's like this, this is when you let it raise, just like this. You scrape it off. It almost looks like a batter. Yeah. Scrape it off. And you let it sit right in the bowl, just like this. Now, what I did, I put some plastic wrap on it. You can warm up your oven, OK? And you can put it in there, turn the oven off, of course. But I'm going to pass this off, because I need some room here, because I want to show you what to do, how to make the bread, OK? Okay, Patty, no more okay. flinging your stuff over here because I'm doing bread over here. Okay, I'll try. Okay. Can't promise, but I will I try. Know. I got my coconut one done. All you do okay. is add coconut to it. How now, much coconut did you add? A cup of coconut. A cup. Okay. Right. And this one next to it is going to be the plain one. Okay. So I don't get them mixed up. Now, what I'm doing with this dough is bringing it out, and I'm going to divide it into half because this is going to make two loaves of bread. Okay? Just like so. It's beautiful. Well, it even smells good. Oh, and yeah. It's not even baked. And you, need, and you need to make sure that you have ample flour. Don't overdo it, but you need what they call bench flour. It's just sitting around here. And you want to make sure it doesn't stick. 
So you start working with it. And then, let me get my knife here. We're going to cut it in half. Just like that. Okay. So that's for one loaf. Put that back over here. And then this one we're going to cut into thirds because this is a braided loaf of bread. So you try to make it a log, try to make it even, like so. And that would be about one, two, three. There we go. And what you're going to do, a little bit more flour here. And you're just going to start shaping this with your two hands like this because this has to go in a roll. And as you roll, start to pull it out. Pull it out to extend it. But you also want to make sure that that dough is nice and smooth. And I would roll it out to about, well, it depends on how much dough. You want them all to be the same length. There's the first one. OK? While I'm rolling and she's rolling, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll show you some more of all we're making for Easter right here on At Home. Stay with us. If you love At Home with Arlene Williams, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have hundreds of episodes with all your favorite recipes, holidays, and friends. Say hi to your fan club. Hi, fan club. And don't forget to click the bell so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. All right, here we are making our Easter desserts, bread, candy, cake, you name it. Patty's shaping her. Now, what size of balls are you making there? You make them about, about an inch, like, inch and a half. You can make them big like or that. little, as long, whatever you want. All right, and you can either do them by hand and try and make little eggs, or if you have a mold, I'd suggest you spray it with like pan butter spray or something and then put it in, otherwise okay. it might stick. And then you could toss that in the fridge or the freezer till it they firms up. They have to up. set up for about an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. Now she's got plain, she's got coconut, peanut butter, and chocolate. Right. All out of one mix. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Okay, and for my breads, here are their challah breads. We get two of them out of our, the recipe. The braiding is easy. You pinch the ends together, and just braid it back and forth, get to the bottom, pinch the ends and turn them under. That's all it is. This is sprayed pan. And here I have a, a full egg, whole egg. And I'm just going to paint this over this because this is going to make these breads nice and brown. Beautiful and brown. Mm-mm-mm. Oh. Tell you the smell of bread baking. There's nothing. I remember as a kid, my mother, well, first of all, when I'd get ready to go to school in the morning, she had this big pan that she used. It was like a big... Um, like a utility pan, and when she had that on the table, we knew we were gonna have bread, because she would start that early in the morning. And I'd say, Mom, are we gonna have bread when I come home? Oh yeah, I'd come home at lunchtime for lunch, and there would be the bread raisin in that big pan. She'd make like seven, eight loaves at a time. Oh. When I'd come home at 3.30, I'd say, Mom, is the bread baked yet? Yep, it is. She'd say, get the butter and the jelly. Oh, music to my ears. Mom would get to, she used to get to cutting that bread. Oh, she knew how to make it, I'm going to tell you. It was so good, so good. And, you know, I knew she made it, and she would never claim herself to be a great baker, although I thought she was, because she made everything good. And I, and I was thinking about that, and I thought, you know, my mother tackled yeast breads and stuff. Why shouldn't I try? That's what prompted me to start to try to, to do something like a challah bread. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to surprise yourself if you try it because it's a great dough, it's a good flavor, good taste. How are we doing over there? Good. All righty. Rolling right along. Rolling right along. Now, Patty, um, when you go to dip those. Yeah, you want them nice and cold. So you dip them in chocolate, chocolate. chips? Yeah, well, chocolate chips, and you put a little tiny bit of oil in it because it melts it down, or and keeps it smooth enough. And it also gives it a nice shine. Yeah, it does. Okay. And then if you want, you could top it with sprinkles or whatever you want to put on to decorate them. But you've got to do it while the chocolate's wet. Okay. Now, after we do the egg, just going to sprinkle with some sesame seeds. Just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy. This goes into a 350-degree oven, and they bake for 40 minutes, and you're done. That's it. They don't, you'll be amazed when that hits the heat. These puppies raise. They do great. 
All right, you gonna put those in sure. for me? Thank you so much. Okay, while she's doing that, let me tell you about the cake that we're doing. Wipe up here a little bit, clean up. There we go. She's doing the chocolate. Show them that yeah, uh, water. Get, get the, yeah, the water. You just just a little you bit keep in it there. Low. You don't touch just the bottom. To get it. Keep this hot. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times I turn the water off because it it's hot, hot enough, and you don't want to burn it. Sure. And you have a mess. So I'll get the ones to dip. Okay. While she's doing that, I've baked a two-layer cake. I made it in my petal pan. It's kind of like a scallop pan. And I've split the layers because this is going to be a tort. That means multiple layers. I have some brown sugar, package of cream cheese, a little bit of vanilla in here. And you bake this according to the package directions, OK? And then I'm just mixing this so it's really nice and creamy. Because what you're going to do now is just fold into this a large Cool Whip. That brown sugar in there is really going to give it some flavor. So, let me make sure I get the right one. One day I did that and I pressed this, so the stuff was flying oh. everywhere. <laughs> Not a good idea. Okay, there we go. Now, you don't want to beat this in. <laughs> We've had experience with beating Cool Whip and it goes flat, it goes into an absolute disaster. So, you don't want to do that. Patty, do we have a, um, what do you need? I need a uh, spatula. Sure. Oh, here I have one. I have one. Thanks. Oh, here's an extra one. Okay. And so you're going to just take this and fold. You know what fold is? Very, not stirring. Gentle. Gently, <laughs> gently, gently doing it. That's pretty cool. Watch how Patty's coloring, or, uh, frosting those, covering them with chocolate, rather. Mm-hmm. Dip them, and then you put a little bit of sprinkles while the chocolate's wet. Now, you want to do sprinkles because you want to make sure people know what's in there. So you do different colored sprinkles for the different kinds of eggs that you're making. Okay, and here I'm just, here we go. Fold, down and up. That's the process, down and up, until it's totally incorporated. If I was to take this thing and just beat it, beat it, it would go flat. Not what we're looking for. Okay, you want to make sure that your cream cheese is soft so that it blends well. Just like that. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to add coconut. Yum, 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 yum. To this. Because we're going to we're going to frost here. Put another layer. We're going to do four and then frost the whole thing with this and decorate with jelly beans. <laughs> You're gonna love it, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna take a break while Patty's dipping and I'm spreading and we'll be back in just a minute to show you everything we made today. To get all the recipes from today's show, plus hundreds of others, just click the link in the video description or visit our website, ctvn.org slash at home. Well, I hope you uh, can take a little trip around the uh, counter with us today. First of all, here's our challah bread. Did I tell you this was beautiful? Look at that bread. This is the kind of slices you get. Look, it's got the beautiful raisins. Look at the, look at the texture of that bread. It's just beautiful. It's smooth, no big holes in it, and it's all done on with your mixer. You don't get in there at all. You don't have to. Makes two loaves just like this. It, they bake in 40 minutes, it's done. Wrap them up, put them in the freezer, you'll have them, bring them out on Easter, okay? That's wonderful. Next, we have our, and we have a marathon of chocolate-covered Easter eggs. I'm telling you, just look. One, two, three, four, five, and that's not even half of them. It makes a lot, and it makes all different varieties. We have a lot of peanut butter, we have coconut, we have cocoa, which is a chocolate, and we have a plain vanilla center. And look how nice they are. Patty outdid herself on all these. She just kept dipping, 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 dipping. We're going to call her, instead of Willy Wonka, we call her Patty Zonka. Because she was going to town on that chocolate. And um, I'll tell you, there's a lot. You can keep these. These will keep refrigerated between, for one week between now and Easter. Give them as a gift. You need a little hostess gift. You have it. 
you give them to your grandkids, give them to the, little, to the kids, you save a lot of money making them rather than buying individually, okay? And then here in the center, this is our coconut tort. Oh my, it's a beauty, isn't it? Four layers and just as delicate as you can see. I mean, it's a beautiful centerpiece and um, I know you're going to like it. Be sure to join us next time because it's going to be Easter and it wouldn't be the same without you. We'll see you then. Furnishings provided by Levin Furniture, featuring Lane's Country Living Collection. Food provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode of At Home. Thank you for watching. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.